Stephen Silverman is Director of Investigations and Enforcement at the Campaign Against Antisemitism and is live with us. Hi, Stephen. Good morning. Um, quite incredible stuff, this. Well, uh, it is remarkable. Um, I don't think it was any secret that uh, Twitter and social media in general was awash with this kind of thing. What we didn't expect was the unwillingness of Twitter to deal with it after the Wiley incident, which I'm sure you'll recall last summer, yeah. in which uh, the rapper Wiley unleashed a, a two-day volley of anti-Semitic abuse on a range of social media platforms, Twitter committed to dealing with this kind of hatred and asked us to work with them as a partner. Uh, they gave us access to their reporting tool, which was meant to um, uh, give access to a higher level, mm. a more proficient level of, of reviewing. And, and, and in how the did, course, and how did you uh, feel about that? Sorry, just to pause on that bit for the moment. Uh, how did you feel about that and and that opportunity to influence what what Twitter was doing in terms of how they deal with this problem? Well, it was very positive because they seemed very keen to engage with us. They seemed genuinely committed to wanting to deal with it. Um, and indeed had made um, public statements towards the end of last year, um, particularly about not allowing Holocaust denial on their platform. So we, we decided we wouldn't just report things, we would keep, we would, we would track it um, scientifically, so which we did. Over a three month period, we reported more than a thousand tweets. Now, these included um, extreme anti-Semitic hate speech and abuse, which is normally the word Jew or an anti-Semitic slur for Jew prefaced by an adjective that I that I can't repeat. Yeah. Um, Hitler was right tweets, tweets using the hashtag gas the Jews. Um, Holocaust denial tweets, which usually uh, include the word hollow hoax. Anti-Semitic conspiracy theory tweets are mentioned for an hour, used for sinister purposes. Tweets calling for the expulsion of Jews, presumably from whichever country the, uh, the, the Twitter user was tweeting from. Mm. Um, tweets holding Jews responsible for atrocities committed in the Soviet Union under Joseph Stalin. And of course, uh, to keep it current, anti-Semitic conspiracy theory tweets relating to COVID-19 and to vaccines. Yeah. Now, these are really at the extreme end of the kind of anti-Semitic abuse, uh, anti abuse that one might expect to encounter. On Twitter, we reported them all, and the majority of them came back as no violation of our rules, which is shocking, uh, absolutely shocking. I mean, there was even one tweet that was an anti-Semitic tweet accompanied by a pornographic image of a very, very young t child, which even passed their... Um, uh, their review process, and I guess now, your point, note, and I was just saying, and I guess your point is, is if this is happening at um, the, the top end in terms of the, the most offensive and most clearly offensive stuff, um, there are questions about what's happening much further downstream from that in terms of the things which are sort of harder to, to pick up. Well, indeed, I mean, we, we, we actually ignored that stuff when uh, we were carrying out this exercise. We decided we would report only the most extreme material, things that were, you know, absolutely black and white. There could be no debate about it. There could be no um, suggestion that somebody was trying to make a political point or was being satirical or ironic. This was clear anti-Semitic hatred. Most of it would have been at home in, um, in Nazi Germany in the 1930s. And yet, Twitter's review process, after we reported these tweets, passed, gave them a clean bill of health. Now, we do not understand why that is. We asked repeatedly to understand the process, to understand who was carrying out the review, what sort of training they had had. And, 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 this, just, and this just to stress the point, this isn't you as, as an outside, completely outside organisation. This is still when you were a, a partner with them on this, wanting to find out more about the process. That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. So they stopped. They 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 basically cancelled the meetings they had scheduled with scheduled with us. Didn't reschedule them and uh, stopped replying to any emails we sent them. Now, you know, at the, at the moment we are in the dark. We can there, we only have recourse to conjecture as to why this may be. But whatever it is, this reflects appallingly on Twitter. It shows that their interest. Uh, in 
dealing with hatred on their platform, certainly as far as it pertains to Jews and anti-Semitism, is at the best is at best um, just lip service. Um, well, 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 I should say. Carry on. Obviously, um, representatives on Twitter aren't here to to defend themselves on this. They uh, they did decline to comment uh, to the Times newspaper on the on the allegations that uh, you and the, the campaign against anti-Semitism have, have made. But they did say in a statement, all online abuse, including anti-Semitic abuse, has no place on Twitter and is prohibited by our rules. The company says that quote attempts to deny or diminish violent events such as the Holocaust are prohibited under Twitter's hateful conduct policy. Glorification of violent events, including the Holocaust, is also banned, as is language that attempts to dehumanise someone based on race, nationality and ethnicity. What do you think of that, Stephen? Well, um, the, well, I don't doubt for one minute that that policy exists. It's the implementation of the policy that is the issue. It's non-existent and it's, it's reminiscent of uh, um, Jeremy Corbyn's repeated... Uh, insistence that he condemned all forms of racism, including anti-Semitism. Without action, it's meaningless. And there has been no action and no explanation for the inaction. So what do you do now? no desire to continue communicating with us. So what do you do now, Stephen? Well, I think all that we can do at this point is to take our findings to government. It is clear that Twitter is either unable or and unwilling to regulate this kind of hatred on their platform. And it's going to take uh, government legislation in order to to bring them under control. It's an appalling situation. Uh, it, it, it's it's abominable. And it's, it, it is literally terrifying. What, what kind of to legislation to do the, what? To, to force them to, to make it, what, turn them into publishers? So they're responsible for what happens on their platform. On their platform. I mean, we know that at the moment the, there is an online harms bill which is being constructed, and, yeah. and you know this needs to be fed into that. Um, the very idea that there is somebody sitting there who can look at a tweet with a hashtag "gas the Jews" and decide that that's okay, we're happy to have that on the platform, it, it, it is quite honestly an abomination, mm. and Twitter need to be held to account for it. Stephen, thank you for your time this morning. I appreciate it. That's Stephen Silverman, Director of Investigations and Enforcement at the Campaign Against Anti-Semitism.